When talking about supplements that are that powerful, they can be compared to pharmaceutical drugs. Long Vida Curcumin is certainly up there due to its potent anti-inflammatory effects. So I'm gonna go over the data on it and its potential longevity benefits, as well as looking at my own personal research in terms of inflammation. So curcumin works by suppressing NF-kappa B, which is a central transcription factor of inflammatory pathways. So it can downregulate IL-1 beta, IL-6, IL-8, and uh, there's another one, TNF-alpha. And TNF-alpha therapy has been getting a lot of hype recently for its potential to slow down aging in biological age tests. And it crosses over into uh, COX-2 inhibition as well as uh, inductible nitric oxide synthase. So these enzymes are involved in inflammatory processes and just reducing overall pain. Obviously nitric oxide, you need that for vasodilation to get blood to those inflamed areas. Then you've got antioxidant enzymes like superoxide dismutase, which protects your mitochondria and it uh, massively declines in your 30s. There's a big steep drop in it. And the other one is catalase and catalase deficiency is very much associated with acceleration of gray hair. And back onto super, super oxide dismutase, I personally believe that, that that big drop that contributes massively to when you see athletes where their performance drops in their 30s, it really does uh, correlate strongly with that because superoxide dismutase has lots of um, performance benefits for sport, as well as all kinds of things, even your skin health too. Curcumin has also been shown to improve lipid profiles, lowering LDL, triglycerides, while improving HDL, your good cholesterol, and that's a long-term project of mine. Yeah, I've been uh, gradually getting it into for higher up into the healthy range. Myself being on TRT, that can be a weak point of people on TRT, having low LDL, uh, sorry, HDL. Moving away from heart health to the brain, it's got neuroprotective effects in preclinical models. It's been shown to reduce the accumulation of beta amyloid plaque in the brain. And while yes, amyloid plaque only plays part of the picture in Alzheimer's, around half the population in their 80s have that uh, pathology, the physical expression of dementia in their brain. And so what it means is you just have to work that bit harder to uh, keep neuroplasticity. So your brain's repathing around that uh, protein aggregation in the brain. But uh, it goes crosses further still with curcumin. It also improves uh, synaptic uh, proteins in the brain. Moving on to longevity studies with animals, it's been shown across the board with C. elegans and fruit flies to extend lifespan. Also, I'm more interested in rodent models and um, with rats, it's been shown to increase lifespan by 10%. And in one species of mouse, it's increased it by 11.7%, so decent numbers there. But then in another breed of mouse, it was negligible. I think I believe the figure was around 2%, something like that between both male and female. So not a great deal there. So negligible really, um, no statistical significance. But then that that's gets me wondering, I mean, if they were to compare those mice, if they were to live more of an actual lifestyle like humans, say if the mice were doing a lot of exercise, maybe having inflammatory foods in their diet, then that number could have been higher, I believe. And also, I believe the scientists, I think there, there needs to be more studies with that breed of mouse, because I think from what I was reading that they, you know certain health span markers, they, they did seem to be better even in that uh, rodent model where, where there was al almost no difference. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. There's even emerging evidence that curcumin can uh, make epigenetic modifications, resetting uh, cells to a more youthful state. Say, for example, uh, with age, the gene P53, it's a tumor suppressing gene, it gets turned off, which is obviously not what you want. And so the curcumin is believed to help with um, you know, resetting the, those genes and you know, the methylation patterns. So, and also uh, the histo modifications because you obviously want genes you know, to still be uh, turned on. And so histones, if they become too tightly bound, they, certain genes will not be turned on. So diving into the reasons why I started curcumin is I do generally have higher inflammation levels. I do go to the gym five days a week and I do, yeah, obviously, break down the muscle consistently. And you can argue bodybuilding or just weightlifting in general is only a semi-natural activity. You know, like obviously doing a manual job is more natural or doing, you know, compound exercises, circuits, that kind of thing. But actual like isolated weight training 
that's it's much more intense than our bodies you know were designed for so you do have to do these things to try and bring down inflammation and obviously we've got inflammatory foods in our diet as well so my inflammation levels i've steadily got my il6 down over the years and it was even better than this uh, the improvements would have been significant before this as well because i've even tested with mudu again looking at dna methylation uh, inflammation which is a much more stable reading and i made reversals in that even before testing with with true age so yeah I'm consistently getting IL-6 down but my C-reactive protein has been going the wrong way and so I'm yet to do I'm doing another test now but looking at uh, on another report of true diagnostic you've got the inflammation age and yeah I made great improvements to start with and then it's been flatlining and then yeah even in the recent test I did that was uh, as of February it was um, in, in, in reality, I've reversed it by a very modest amount when you take into account I'm 0.66 years older. So it's only I reversed it by just maybe 0.1 or just over that 0.15. So a very marginal amount. And I believe so that, that that's why starting Kirkman, I think this is going to really help, you know, across the board with inflammation. It's just such a good general anti-inflammatory. I only started doing Long Vida Kirkman back in March, so I'm very excited to see my latest results. I'm going to do a test around the, the mid-May point and see what happens there. Up until that point last year, I was trying to put uh, you know, turmeric in my food all the time. And then I would kind of switch from that, trying to just mix it into a drink. But either way, I, the taste is very overpowering. So if you're trying to regularly get it in your food, it just everything tastes the same. But also your teeth start to go yellow. I mean, if you that's why I switched to doing it in a drink in the evening. But then even you know brushing your teeth, your toothbrush will go yellow. If you get a tiniest little bit around your lips and you use wipe your face, you know after washing your face. The towel will go yellow if you get any on your work tops. It just gets everywhere. It's very problematic. And then when you actually compare it to a proper curcumin, obviously that's more condensed. And then that further still, when you're using Long Vida curcumin, that's 95 times more bioavailable. A lot of wellness influencers will hype up putting turmeric in your food, but just it's not very practical to actually get a decent amount in there. And if you've got high inflammation, it's not gonna really move the needle. And on the subject of moving the needle, this particular client of mine was happy to share his results with using, yes, Manjaro, the other name is tazepatide for weight loss, obviously insulin sensitivity, which obviously that can help too, but he was also using Long Vida curcumin at the same time. I believe they both had a synergistic effect at getting both IL-6 and CRP down. And both myself and this client have been using the Long Vida curcumin from Vitality Pro. It's a very high-end supplement retailer testing across the board, but on the same time, they're very reasonably priced too. Another benefit of the Long Vida curcumin is its long half-life at around seven and a half hours. So uh, for myself, I do it in the evening. I exercise early in the morning. So there'd only be a very residual amount left by that point. The issue with doing it, say, straight after exercise is curcumin inhibits MAPK, mitogen activated protein kinase. And this pathway is involved in a cellular stress response as well as inflammation. So you do want that uh, engaged for some period of time post-exercise to let your body do its work and then take something later on in the evening or you'd have to do it the other way around if you exercise in the evening and that's where some of the scare stories come with curcumin doing it too close to exercise and blunting that uh, beneficial response to exercise moving forward curcumin is going to be a mainstay in my protocol it being a no-brainer with my high inflammation unless it gets really really low which is going to take a very long time to say once I get into that bottom fifth percentile for IL-6, then uh, th then I would maybe cut it down to a few days a week, that kind of thing. But that's, that, that could be, it might never happen because of my lifestyle. And I'll be sure to do update videos on it, showing where my inflammation's going, as well as going into other longevity benefits. We've only really scratched the surface with it. So if you like that video, then check out this one here on sulfurophane. It's a potent NERF2 activator, so your antioxidant pathway. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.